Hello and welcome to another Ask Nerida Joy video. I have a very familiar face here today, uh, Carol. This is Carol's third facial. Last time we did a peel on her and we can insert the photos here for you so you can see from facial number one to facial number two and now we're on to facial number three. So what we have, we went pretty deep with a peel, uh, her second facial. I wanted to get down to those layers to really help the pitting in her skin. And so her skin is looking so much better now. If we look back at the original photo that we had of Carol, you can see where her skin was really, it, it was lacking uh, a lot of tone in her skin. So what the peel has done too, because it is a resourceful and a lactic acid peel, it's really helped to pick up the texture and give the skin a much more healthy, dewy, pretty look. So we've, um, we, we've got a brighter skin now. We found that Carol's pitting is not as deep. It's a, a lot brighter, even within the pit itself, it's not as dark. Uh, so her texture looks a lot smoother and it is a lot smoother. So what we are going to do today is we're going to keep going with the peels because we want to get down as much as we, we can just to help the pitting, um, just to help sort of alleviate that and lighten it up as much as possible. So the best thing to do when you're dealing with pitting is if you go um, not too strong uh, so quickly, you're going to find that the skin is still going to stay really healthy and pretty. And that's what's important. If you go too deep too quickly, it has to rebuild itself and, and what happens in that process is it forms more scar tissue. So that's often when people have really strong Fraxel lasers and really strong peels, the skin has to uh, rebuild itself quickly in, in the form of um, just to protect itself. But in doing that, it just doesn't have that, it loses that really dewy, pretty look. So you can often tell when people have had really heavy, strong peels because it takes that really pretty look away from the skin and it's a form of scarring. So what if you go at a lesser depth and you do it on a more regular basis, then the results that you're going to get are gonna be much better. And what happens is just be more consistent with the peels, don't do them as, as deep and, uh, and do more of them. Rather than do really deep and only do a few, you're better to do more of the, the lighter peels and that way you're still gonna keep a really pretty texture in the skin. So that's what we're doing with Carol. So her skin looks really healthy, it looks really good. We are going to go in today with another peel. And first I'm going to cleanse her skin off and we're gonna be using the cake cleanser. Her skin feels really good. Now, Carol was really good before with her facials anyway. She was having regular facials. She was not using AHAs and she was not using retinols. So we've, we've put that into her home care regimen. And what retinols really do and AHAs is they really help to stimulate the fibroblast cells. Now, when you're stimulating fibroblast cells, you're lessening the depth of a wrinkle, you're shrinking a, a pore size, and you're just helping the texture overall. So it's how you build a strong foundation. If you're using products and ingredients that stimulate fibroblast cells, then that's what keeps your skin younger longer. So once you start using retinols in particular, yes, it makes the skin a little photosensitive on the, the very outer layer, which is why you have to use a very good sunscreen, an SPF of a, a 30 or 40 at least, living here in California. But the network underneath, it makes it a lot stronger. So you have a stronger foundation in your dermal layers. And that's what's really important to keep your skin strong and sturdy, because as we get older, our skin tone uh, tends to get more lax. So we want to make sure that you're really using good products to keep your skin strong and sturdy because once you get to your late 50s as am I, you really notice the tone in the skin. So you want to, uh, anything that you can do to keep it tight and uh, stop that jarling from happening is really terrific. So retinols and AHAs are such a plus in our business. And um, as you know, I don't prescribe and recommend um, 
prescription retinols, of course. I don't certainly don't recommend them, um, as uh, as I believe that you know I want you to be able to use a retinol every night, and if you can use one that isn't too strong, and you're either adding a little bit to your moisturiser or to a serum. Uh, or applying it over top of a serum, then you're going to get more benefits for the same reason I mentioned earlier. If you use one that isn't as strong, it's not going to irritate your skin. And that way you can use it on a regular basis and you're gonna get better results. And if you go too strong too quickly, a strong retinol is going to make your skin really irritated and make it red and really dry. And if you build up that dryness on top, then you're gonna have a problem because with surface dryness, which is what a retinol can do if it's too strong, then your, your treatment products are not going to get in. They're not going to absorb and get to the levels where they need to go in the skin. But also if you're a little bit oily, it's not going to, the oil's not going to be able to come out. So it's really important is, is the balance within what you do. It's, it's like everything. If you go too strong at exercise and you damage your, your muscles, then you can't, you can't go back and work out again for a while. So you just want to, it's everything in moderation, but it's the consistency of what you do that's so important. So we are now going to take off the cleanser. Carol has a little bit of ruddiness on her neck. Uh, just down around here. So her neck is a sensitive area and everybody's neck is more sensitive than the face. So it is really important to uh, to make sure that you're not, you know, being too aggressive on the neck with products. I don't even use uh, retinols on my neck every night. I couldn't because my neck would be irritated. But yet I can use them on my face every night. Um, and it's, it's just the, the neck is a sensitive area for everybody. And the décolleté is a different type of skin too than the face where you can peel and you can do all these amazing things on the face that are so great. The neck and the décolleté you have to be very careful because what uh, the, the peel that I do on the face, the one that we do on Carol, which is a lactic um, acid peel, uh, it has a little resorcinol in it. That one works really great on the face but it doesn't even peel on the neck and the décolleté, the, it would just burn and fry the neck. And the décolleté, it doesn't even peel, like it, it won't actually physically peel. So it is, they're very different skins and it's just important. I can do an AHA uh, treatment um, cream or the fruit complex on her, uh, on her chest, um, which I can do on the face as well, of course, but I can use that on the chest, which would be probably more effective than um, a lot of other things out there. So sometimes retinols are just, they're too strong and just too aggressive for the décolleté in the neck area. So you want to be really careful not to go too strong because if you make the skin sensitive, then you can get a slight chemical burn or you could also get a little bit of dermatitis or eczema as a result of it. So you don't want to go too strong with anything. So now we're going to do the exfoliating mask on her face. I'm going to use this on Carol. We've cleansed her skin. I'm putting the exfoliating mask on. I just added a drop of healing gel to it. And we're just going to put this on. Her skin is very clean. Um, I can feel it and I can see it. It's very, very clean. She's been really good with her home care regimen. I can see that she's been very diligent with that, which is fantastic. Okay, I'm going to take it off now. Okay, now what I want to do, I haven't uh, looked at Carol's skin since her last peel. So I, I want to uh, put some goggles on and just bring the light over and have a look. And just see that her, um, to see how clean her skin is before we put the peel on. We're going to start with our peeling formula again. So her skin looks pretty clean. Um, there's just a couple of things that I'm going to extract before I put the peel on. Once you do the peel on somebody's skin, it doesn't, the skin can't breathe for a little while. So I always tell people if you are, you are somebody that likes to work out, for the next few days you want to make sure that you're not working out because you don't want to sweat when you've got the peel on because the skin's not breathing underneath. So we just want to make sure that her skin's really clean underneath there before I put the peel on and that way, um, you know, it's not going to 
suffocate um, a, a pustule that I could remove today, which I will be doing. Okay, so what we've done, uh, we cleansed Carol's skin, we did an exfoliant on her skin. I'm about to do the peel on her, but I did want to make sure that she has all her, her skin's really clean. So I did spend, you know, five to 10 minutes extracting uh, some blackheads on her nose and on her chin area, excuse me, mostly. Um, so I just wanted to clean that up because as I've said in the past, when you've got a clean pore, you can shrink a pore. You cannot shrink pores if they're not cleaned and they have the bacteria, dead cells and sebum inside. So you want to make sure the pore's really clean and that way when you go to do a peel or when you go to do an AHA on the skin, it helps to shrink the pore size. They are not going to close up completely and nor are they supposed to close up completely, but you can certainly shrink a pore size. So anybody that tells you you can't shrink pores, you absolutely can and I do it all the time. So uh, it makes a huge difference, but you do have to have the skin clean. So we have cleaned it off. I've just got a little bit of the, um, just a, our refreshener here. I'm going over the skin and we are preparing now for the peel. So um, I'm going to pour a little bit of my peeling formula into a container that I'm going to be able to discard afterwards because you, um, the peel, it, um, it's not something you can wash off. So any container, I prefer it be a disposable one because I want to be able to dice it away once I've uh, used it, uh, used, you know, done all my layers. So we're just going to prepare. I'm going to pour a little bit of the peeling formula into a container. And this is a peeling formula. You want to make sure that your container is new and clean and of course, one that you're going to be throwing away afterwards. So I'm going to pour some peeling formula in here. I'm going to do a few coats on Carol's skin. So I poured some of the peeling formula in the container. This is the peeling formula and this will be discarded once I've done. You don't want to be maneuvering the peeling formula anywhere around your client's eyes because if any spills or drips, that would not be good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the pre-peel solution on the skin. We're going to put a layer all over the face. Pre-peel stops my chemical, my lactic peel from being a strong, really strong peel. So this pre-peel solution, it just uh, puts a base on the skin so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fry the skin too much. We don't want to overkill. We just want to do a nice peel. So this is a pre-peel solution. You put it all over the face and you just put one coat of it on. Now around on Carol's neck, we, um, we're not going to do the peel down here today. She's still a little bit red. So she might've been a little bit irritated from the peel that we did uh, a little over a week ago. When was it, how long ago did we do the peel? Like three and a half. Oh, three and a half weeks ago? Something like that. Okay, so the, the last facial we did roughly around three and a half weeks ago, um, we did go down a little bit onto her neck, but she's a little bit irritated down here today, so I'm not going to put the peel down onto the neck area. She doesn't need it either. So we're just going to keep an eye on that area, and I'm just going to have make sure that she uses a healing gel well down here. So again, uh, the neck is a very sensitive area, so it's an area that we want to um, protect we don't want her to get eczema or dermatitis there or something where it's really irritated. So we just want to, I'm not going to take it down. I'm going to just go up underneath the jawline with the peel and then that's going to be it. So we leave the, the pre-peel solution, which was the little one, the little, this bottle here that we just put on. We leave this on for a couple of minutes just until it dries on the skin and then you go now with the peel. And this is the peel. Now I am going to put on a glove because when I use a cotton round, I usually get a little bit on my fingers and I don't want to do that. Sometimes I get it on, but there we go. Okay, so I'm going to use a peel. So again, just keep it away from your client's eyes. 
here goes the application. So good to warn your client, you're now putting the peel on. She's not gonna feel it in the very beginning and it is going to take uh, a few minutes for her to start to feel the burning of the peel. Now going up around the eye area, you want to be very careful that you it's not running anywhere into the eyes and I'm not going to be looking at the camera right now because I want to pay attention to what I'm doing so that I'm um, keeping an eye on the peel and that it's not running anywhere it shouldn't be running. I want to make sure you don't get it on the lip but again I'm not going too far down onto the neck where she's a little red we're just going up underneath the chin. Now because this cotton swab is quite saturated with the peel it, if I was using Q-tips on the face and putting two Q-tips in and then applying it, it would not be as heavy an application as the cotton swab. I'm using the cotton swab because I want to make sure that I work the peel into the pitting. So we're really sort of working it into the areas on the cheek and getting it in the pitted areas there. So that is what's going to help those areas to smooth out. Okay, so we've got a few applications on there now. Because it is a cotton swab too, it is equivalent to a, a couple of more applications. So she's probably got about uh, four applications on right now. And I'm just going to get a little fan and fan her off because I want to dry it. What are some of the benefits of a peel? Uh, great for oily skin. I have peeled my own skin once and I don't peel skin a skin for wrinkles. I peel a skin for freckles. I will peel a skin for brown spots and large pores, uh, acne scarring and pitting. But for wrinkles and mature skin, I would prefer to use the fruit complex, which is my AHAs. And that particular product is this one here. So, you know, any AHAs, uh, this one here is a combination, it's a fruit complex and what that means is it's a, a, a mixture of your glycolic, your lactic, your malic, tartaric and citrus. And what that is, is they're all the different molecular sizes and weights of the, the AHA acids. Uh, so you have your glycolic as your smallest molecule and what that means is it goes to the deepest level in the skin. Uh, it's a, a, a smaller molecule and um, it, then you've got your lactic acid and then your malic, your tartaric and your citrus. So they're all in order of molecular size and weight and so it works on different levels in the skin. So when you're working on as anybody's skin, uh, my skin or Carol's skin, you want to work on all your levels so that you build a strong foundation in the skin because I always give the example of a house. It's when you build a house, you can't just have a strong foundation. You have to have a strong, you know, the, the walls have to be strong. The, the roof has to be strong. So everything has to be strong to support the structure as a whole. And it's the same with the skin. When you're working on, with a complex, whether it be a vitamin A complex, which is your, um, your retinoic acid, your A1, your A2, your acetate, your palmitates, they're all different molecules of the vitamin A groupings. So retin A is just one molecule. So when you can work with a complex of vitamin A groupings, then again, you're working on a really good structure in the skin and you're working on all the structures, all the layers in the skin. So you're building a really strong foundation. So that's what's important when uh, it's nice if you have complexes that you can work with because it really benefits the skin tremendously. So I would prefer on a, on a drier, more mature skin to use a fruit complex. But on an oily skin, I'm going, that's got open pores and pitting, then if you do a peel, you're just going to get really good results. So, and it's, um, you know, once you've cleaned the skin and you've got the skin prepped, you're gonna get just great results, which is what we're going to, and what we're seeing with Carol's skin. So I'm sorry, I'm using a little piece of cardboard here for my fan. So we fanned her off. 
Uh, she's quite red, as you can see. She's starting to frost. So she's had probably four or five applications already. We're going to go back and I'm going to do more because I, I do want her skin to get frosty. So here we go. We want some more frosting going on. And I want to go heavier with the peeling on her cheeks because that's where she has the more of her pitting. But just from one peel, we've, uh, we've seen really good results already with her skin. So it's uh, just going to get better. Now what the healing gel is really good for, it's 98% aloe vera, but it's a really good uh, gel for burns. So people, whether you get a, a, um, a burn from a fire or, a, you know, um, an oven or whether it be that you have a chemical burn um, or any type of burning on the skin, which you certainly do when you have a peel or you do a, an AHA on the skin, that's why the uh, aloe vera, um, the skin healing gel is so great. And it's just a really good moisturizer for really oily skin anyway. So I often use it just if I'm going to the gym. I'll put just that on my skin and go to the gym because uh, I'll be sweating at the gym, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, it's just nice. You don't want to have anything too much on the skin, but yet it's something that's, that's really nice and very comfortable even for me to use on its own. So as I said, I'm using a cotton round because I'm just wanting, I'm working the peel into the pitting. So it, uh, it's much better than when, um, if I was using two Q-tips, I'm getting it into the pitting better this way, so. Now when you're doing peel, the peeling formula, you want to make sure that you, you're, you're very prepared for it, in that you have um, your items ready, because wherever the peeling formula, whatever it gets on, it's going to mark. So if you're, you know, if you have a pretty, cut a, a pretty top to your your cupboard in your treatment room you want to make sure you don't put the peel directly on there because it's going to mark it um, and so you want to just sort of be very careful where you place it and how you work with it um, and obviously being very careful around your client's eyes and just making sure it doesn't get to areas that it shouldn't be okay so I'm going to put a little bit more in I'm going to do a little bit heavier on her cheeks right now with the peel okay Okay, so we're working this in very well into her cheeks there, just to get within that pitting. She has a little bit of pitting too on her temples. So again, we're doing the same there on the temples and that's going to be the last coat now for Carol. So she's quite red, as you can see, we are discarding this now. Um, have you, are you still burning a little bit, a mm. lot? Yeah, <laughs> a lot or a little bit? A lot okay so we're going to still keep fanning she's still burning a lot so we're going to so she's nice and frosty we are going to fan her down more she's still um, on fire her skin is on fire so I'm going to fan her off here now now on someone who wasn't using retinols on a regular basis or AHAs you they wouldn't get red as quickly and it, you would have to do more coats. But because Carol's skin is prepped and because her uh, in her home care regimen, she is using retinol anyway, so her skin is responding faster. Okay, that's it. We're going to remove the residue with some coal sponges. I'm not going to have it have them very dampened, just a little bit, just to sloth off anything that's on the on top. Okay, so cold water, 
and I'm just taking off any residue that's on there, which is not just a little bit. The skin absorbs it and uh, there's not a lot left on top. As I said before, you can't wash it off even if I wanted to. Once it's on and it's done its job, it's, um, it's there to stay. Okay, I'm going to put a mask on. And I'm only going to leave this on for a few minutes to calm her, her skin down. I'm also going to get some ice and we're going to ice her skin down. Okay, so we have the purifying mask on Carol. I just uh, removed the excess of the, the peeling formula with um, the disposable sponges. And now we have um, the purifying mask on. Her skin still, still feels a little warm underneath, quite warm. So I'm going to, um, I put some gauze on and I'm just going to ice her down a little bit and then she's good to go. I like to soften my ice packs and uh, so that I can maneuver them around the face and it just makes them very flexible. So here we go, five. Mm. And I know this feels really good for Carol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's going, mm hmm <laughs> It's so exciting because we get to um, be able to go down deeper and her skin's just going to get better and better, which is amazing. And it's already looking so great, so I'm really happy. Alrighty, I'm going to remove the mask and I really am going to let these towels cool because I don't want to have heat near her at all at the moment because of the peel that we've just done. So we've taken the gauze off, we've iced her for a few minutes and now we're going to remove the rest of the mask. So we've removed the bulk of her mask with these, the towels, um, barely warm towels. I've got two clean sponges, not the ones that I removed the excess peel from. I've got two clean cool sponges because we don't want to get peel anywhere near her face right now. She's already... Um, had enough of that and now we're just taking off the little tiny bits that are left I did ask her just now not to use any retinol or any AHAs on her neck because I can see she's got a little irritation there and I, uh, I said to her if she could just use the healing gel that would be great for the moment because I want to heal that neck area up uh, retinols as I said the necks a very sensitive area and I can't use retinols on my neck all the time either. I can probably do it twice a week only. Um, it's just a very, very sensitive area of the neck, so you don't want to be doing too much to it. Just often a serum, the healing gel, and then that's sufficient. Um, I use a little AHA on mine, but again, I can't do it consistently because as I said, the neck is a very sensitive area. So we're all done. I'm going to put um, I'm going to put some healing gel on Carol for the next week until Carol has pretty well peeled off. The only she, thing she can be using is a cleanser, the K cleanser, and which is the non-foaming gel and the healing gel. She can wash her face as usual. Uh, sometimes I tell people to wash their face three times a day with the K cleanser. The more um, often it helps the skin to peel faster. And, and then the healing gel she can put on as many times as she wants a day, but she cannot put anything else on her face. If she's going out in the sun, she can put a little bit of sunblock on, preferably a powder sunscreen, which could be a mineral sunscreen, and uh, one that is high in your physical blocks, which is always better. And 
um, but then when she gets back into the house, she has to take it off. So if the less is better when you do a peel. You want the skin to stay dry, you want it to peel quickly, and for that to happen, you cannot be putting moisturizers and makeup and, and liquid sunscreens on the face. So just the healing gel, and she can put it on many, many times a day. She will go through the same stage or very similar to the first time which means that tomorrow her skin will start to feel tight and the the following day it'll be very tight and start to little, look a little wrinkly and then it's going to start peeling. So three day three and day four from today are going to be her worst looking days because she's going to be peeling, she's going to be dry and it's a little uncomfortable. It's very important that she's not applying makeup and sunscreens um, on her face because that's going to take her skin longer to peel if, if she does that. It's best just to keep it very clean, uh, stay indoors. If she is going outdoors, she can put on a powder physical sunblock, but as soon as she gets back home, she needs to take it off again. Best if you, you're not going out too much in the sun because the skin is more sensitive to the sun, it's going to be a little burning anyway if you, once you feel the heat on the face. So we will ask Carol to send us some more uh, pictures throughout um, the time of her peeling so she can show us her progress that we can, so we can post that and you can see how she's doing. And thank you again for another, this is now Carol's third facial. Mm -hmm. And Carol, thank you for being another trooper and having that burning <laughs> frying peel on her face. Uh, we're, I'm looking forward to seeing her skin. Her skin is really getting um, better, a lot better quite quickly and it's really helping because of what her home care regimen is too. So that's fantastic. So she's had her peel and we will see her back in a month or so for her final, her final facial. And uh, Carol, thank you again for joining us and thank you and we will be back to see you soon. Bye bye.